Hello everybody, Lisa Strickland here, your autoimmune health coach. How are you today? So, I decided just to have a little bit of a break from food and talk to you about inflammation and sleep because sleep is so important when you have autoimmune issues and even when you don't. So, looking at your at being able to sleep really well when you are having reactions in your body you know with autoimmune issues we can tend to get lots of aches and pains and it really does keep us awake at night you know we lie there and we're just wondering what we can do for ourselves so there's lots of different things that you can do to assist your body when it's inflamed to help reduce the inflammation but also to get yourself to sleep because unless you're getting your sleep, of course you're going to find that your body is not going to be able to get the rest that it needs to be able to help reduce your inflammation. So firstly, getting a routine together, you know, and actually re re really thinking about how you can step through your evening. And it's really quite amazing. Our bodies are really wonderful things. They understand when we are in a routine. And so we get to a point and, and you think about it, okay? If you uh, maybe go and watch some TV in the evening and you fall asleep regularly in the chair, you will find that it's usually around the same time because your body starts to get used to relaxing and falling asleep. So if you actually get yourself into a routine, you know, and even when you're dealing with aches and pains, that is a really good way to start, okay? So, you know, using that time to go, okay, so what time is realistically the time that I need to get to bed? So realistically, you're looking at, say, say nine o'clock. So about eight o'clock, you start working out the different things that you need to get you to sleep by nine. And those things can be things like um, after you've, you know, cleaned up after your dinners and all the rest of it, that you start to come off of your screens, okay? So blue light is a big thing that keeps us awake and also disturbs our sleep at night time. So coming off of um, TVs, computers, uh, iPads, uh, your mobile phone, anything like that, at least an hour before you go to sleep. Okay. Now, if you're finding still that you're having trouble, you need to come off of it earlier. Okay. Some of us are affected more than others. And um, this will assist your body to get into its circadian rhythms, which is, you know, just using its natural sense of being able to, you know, move through things to go to sleep. Now, number two is to remember that when you have your dinner, try and have it earlier so that you've eaten at least two hours before because you need your digestion to have, have done it's all its hard work before you're trying to sleep because I'm sure that you've tried it before and Christmas time tends to be a time when if you're trying to sleep with a really full belly of food, it doesn't work, you know. It actually keeps you awake and gives your body something else to think about. So we're trying to really assist our bodies to shut down, okay? So really shut down because we have those extra issues going on with a few aches and pains and, and there could be a lot more involved. So you're really trying to shut your body down. So by actually working through things and having your body do as least as possible when you're trying to go to sleep. So really, so we're talking about our blue screens, getting off of our computers and things an hour to two hours before. Food, try and have your food earlier. Number three, we can look at um, actually starting to, you know, do our, like go and have a shower, maybe have a bath. That's going to assist you um, on your routine that you that you want to. So you need to think about how you want how it looks for you, right? For me, it's coming off of my screens. You know, um, I might have a cup of herbal tea, and I may even read a book, or I'll leave that and I'll go have a shower, and then I'll sit in in bed with a nice cup of herbal tea and a book. 
Now, if you're a person that is uh, goes to the toilet a lot in the night, then maybe a cup of herbal tea might be early in your routine because you don't want to be, you know, waking up to have to go to the loo because that's the other thing. The longevity of your sleep is always great as well to be able to allow your body to go through its emotions when you're in that beautiful deep sleep. But, you know, finding those things that are going to assist you, maybe a bit of meditation before you go to sleep, and it may actually assist you to go to sleep. So just have, have you know, that going. And then if you drop off to sleep, it doesn't really matter. So it's all about understanding and finding the things that you can use to actually get yourself into a state of relaxation enough so you can sleep. Now, a few things that you can do to help reduce your inflammation to cut back on, you know, those really, um, those aches and pains and that sort of thing. Okay, so number one, of course, and you've heard me say it before, magnesium, so, so important. So getting yourself a nice lot of magnesium, popping it into a bath. If you don't have a good bath, a foot bath is just as good, okay? So just get a tub of lovely warm water with some Epsom salts in it or some beautiful salts with some essential oils as well in there and put your feet in, okay? And you can do that while you're reading a book, while you're just starting to do your whole, you know, routine of, of getting your body to a place where you need it to be so that you can relax and go to sleep. Now, another thing is magnesium cream. So if you've got aches and pains, rubbing it into, you know, shoulders, knees, feet, if you have restless legs, um, rubbing it into your legs, it works a treat, okay? It works really well and calms your body down enough so that you don't get that restless legs because restless legs is all about magnesium deficiency, okay? So using those few things to help you to reduce that. Also essential oils are an amazing thing and I have a diffuser in my house, in my room, I have a diffuser going all night with lavender um, and, and a few different you know, oils like that that help us to relax. So there you have a few things to assist you to you know, reduce your aches and pains at night time but also to be able to get you on that you know, on that train to go to sleep or, you know, the counting of sheep as they, but just something that's going to assist you to relax and get you to a place of sleep. And all of these things and more we talk about in my six week program that assists you to really move through that. So if you want further assistance with your inflammation and the different parts that make up you know, heading, heading you in the direction that you want to, to feel good, to feel relaxed, to feel nurtured, you know, let me know, you know, drop me a line. I'm lovely, love to have a chat with you and give you more information. But really think about how you can assist your body to sleep because when you sleep, your inflammation, you will help your inflammation because your body will be able to rejuvenate. Okay, everybody, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.